Howdy folks, welcome back to Regiments. I made a whole series of videos on Regiments free playtests, but I feel like, especially with some of the comments on those videos, people fail to see how it's different from Warno and Wargame. Today, I wanted to make a clear and concise video showcasing the operations game mode in Regiments, which I think will be the main selling point of the game. I should note, you can still actually play this test for free. Link is at the top of the description. Though before we jump into operations, I just want to touch on the more basic skirmish game mode real quick. The main reason is that besides the regular meeting engagement game mode, where you fight enemies over capture zones, there are also two different game modes that aren't available in this round of the playtest, but were in previous iterations where I tried them out. The attack game mode sees one side defend multiple objectives, while the other is purely trying to capture as many of these as possible. Something that I think would be really cool to see in Warno, this is sort of similar to the rush game mode from Battlefield. The other game mode, called Mobile Defense, is a very interesting one. Friendly units are marked on the map and are behind enemy lines. Your job is to fight your way to their locations, secure the area, protect transport trucks on their way to and from these zones. Obviously the defender wants to eliminate either these pockets of resistance or ambush these trucks near the area to cause huge delays for the attacker. The basic meeting engagement game mode, which is you fight over points on the map, also has a twist to it. You can set it up so these zones will only be active for a certain time before they move around on the map, which actively counters camping and also allows a team to come back from a botched attack earlier in the game. This means you have to keep enough points in reserve to respond to these objectives moving while still putting enough pressure on the current capture objectives. With that out of the way, the reason why I and so many others have been raving over this game is the Operations Game Mode. Right now in a free test there is only one available, but it looks like the game will ship with at least four, with potentially more being added down the line. Operation Firebird sees you command the 40th Motorized Rifle Regiment in mid-June of 1989. Your main objectives are to breach the West German defenses and capturing a large Air Force base as well as defending this base from future counterattacks. You are given eight phases, which each represent a certain amount of hours in a day, to complete those objectives. Before you start, you can opt to have random events on or off. We'll get back to that later on, though I'd recommend turning it off for your first playthrough for sure. Initially, the campaign screen seems really intimidating, but it's really not that bad. Let's take it from the top. So we have eight phases left, and we currently have 400 Operational Authority, or OA, points. This is basically your currency that allows you to upgrade and buy units as well as repair or heal them. Underneath that, we can see the current makeup of the 40th Martyr Rifle Unit, with the number on the left of an icon indicating how many units of that type are available. For example, there are eight BRM-1K units ready for combat. On the right, we see two of the Regiment's Tactical Support or Tactical Aid Strike Collins. These are special off-map abilities that will either help you and your team or hurt your opponent. We can buy up to three additional task forces to be assigned to you with your OA points using the big plus squares below. Each task force can be upgraded from level 1 to level 3, with upgrading giving better units or higher unit veterancy, as well as potentially having tactical aid strikes or upgrades to your tactical aid. For example, the Molot Armored Task Force initially gives you 6 T-64B1Vs and 6 T-64B1 tanks. When upgrading to level 2, one of the initial units gets replaced by 6 T-80Us, as well as 12 BTR-70s with fire support teams are now assigned to this task force. The final upgrade replaces the second tank units with more T-80s, as well as gives them each 50% more tanks, the BTR-70 fire support platoons now come at level 2 veterancy. Below the task force selection, we have four important point bars. Each of these is upgradable using some of your OA points, but you'll learn soon enough that you have too many things to spend money on and not enough of it. Deployment points is the total cost of platoons you can field at the same time. Each unit costs points in battle to call in with some being more expensive than others. Having more deployment points means you can call in more units at any one time. 
buying reinforcing task forces shows the force total deployment cost going up so you can see how much you have to upgrade to get all of your units out at once. Supplies are very simple, when you run out of them you'll have a hard time repairing and rearming units in battle. Tactical support or tack aid shows how many points you start with in the next battle for deploying tactical aid strikes. By default, the 40th Motor Rifle Regiment gets access to a 5-point smoke artillery column as well as a 20-point tactical ballistic missile strike. You also gain these points throughout the battle, but if you want to start off the game with a large tactical 8-strike offensive, you want to put some of your OA points into this area. Last but not least are the engineer points. Later on in this campaign, when you have to defend the airfield against counterattacks, you should get some of these points to spawn down AI controlled units such as mortar emplacements, recon, anti air, anti tank guided missiles, and more. These aren't fantastic, but will definitely slow the enemy down enough, allowing you to respond to the incoming threat before it's too late. On the right, we can see the stages and situation buttons. Clicking on situation allows you to read some background information. This will explain what happens around your unit, destroyed friendly or enemy formations, intel on who are fighting next, and more. Going back to stages now shows the map of the area with the three maps slash battlefields you're going to fight over. After you complete the in-game objectives on the first map, you can either opt to stay on that map to further wipe the enemy out, or you can continue to the next objective in the line. Each one is marked by a V and a number, and as you can see, near the top to win you need 170 points, though there are ways to win harder, with 230 points being the upper limit. Before we jump into battles where we do a little callback to the events where I mentioned earlier, events are randomized each time you start a new operation. However, with the option turned off, as I recommend for new players, you can pick and choose what event you want to have happen for each battle. Once you pick an event, it's gone until all four events have been picked, and then you are presented with four new events. Some are positive, some are negative, and some are neutral. When you select random events, you cannot see what the events do, which does make for some interesting possibilities when you turn that option on. So initially, you deploy the units you want to start with. The game is paused by default, so you can order them however you want. Think sort of like Steel Division or Warner, where you have some setup time. The main point is you want to flank units that are dug in with trenches and sandbags to cause the most damage. Now luckily, the smoke tactical aid is very cheap and reloads fast, which is great for this tactic. Make sure to spread units out as much as possible as enemy artillery is plentiful and also brutally accurate. I prefer to personally use smaller mortars as they automatically fire, which larger pieces of artillery and howitzers will have to be given manual commands each time they need to retarget something new. Those orange crossed obstacles force units to remove them once they touch them. Now some units like infantry platoons or assault engineers have bonuses in their speed to take these down, which is why you see me try to use mostly infantry based units to do so. If you don't take the majority of these down, it can cost you really heavily when later on in the battle you call in reinforcements and they get stuck on one of these, potentially costing you a flank or even worse. Destroying these means that if you have to replay the map on attack, you won't have to deal with them anymore. Usually worth keeping an engineer unit in the back to deal with them. Once your infantry platoons in BTRs or BMPs get close to enemy units, you deploy the infantry by pressing X and suddenly you get a full loadout of infantry perfectly capable of even dealing with the heaviest enemy units, especially combining this with a flanking move. Now here, enemy A tends to do a gun run, and since I was limited to this Shilka anti-aircraft, they make it through, causing quite a bit of damage to some of my infantry and transports. I finally made use of some of the deadly tactical aid by deploying the Tochka tactical ballistic missile and outright destroyed some enemy units grouped too close together. Using some of my smoke tactical aid, I masked two of my T-80 tank units from closing on this martyr platoon. Once the smoke clears, they basically obliterate them from the flank. You really need to use smoke, it is fantastic. With a little time left on the clock, I barely missed grabbing one of the final objectives. I actually didn't want to complete all of them anyway, as I wanted to replay this mission just to showcase to you some of the persistence that makes this Operation game mode so unique and different from other games. 
All right, so we're technically on the replay or continuation of the last part of the battle. As you can see, all the units and their locations stay as they were. Uh, we actually managed to capture this area. Now we still have to capture these two. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna showcase to you what has really happened. We're going to hide the HUD and the mouse cursor using I and O. Earlier on, I lost a Shilka when I was trying to advance a little bit too aggressively. You can see the results of that here. I think one of my friendly BTRs was also destroyed, one of my AI BTRs. And you can still see the wrecks of these on the battlefield. Same goes for all the artillery impacts. It might be a little bit hard to see on the left over there, but you can see how much the AI really likes to use his artillery, considering those are mostly artillery impacts. There are some, as I have to really get my mouse cursor back, we can see actually these are all exploded areas of barricades. There's still one left here technically as well as some destroyed units over in the trenches. Looks like some West German M113s. And on the right side of the map, we did have a little bit of combat, mostly between my BMP-1Ps. We can see here a BMP-1P that was destroyed, some West German M113s. I believe we have some martyrs over here that were obviously destroyed. Also an enemy Gepard anti-air unit that was advancing. So again, this persistence between wrecks explosions the entire obviously the map here that's turned into the moon and the fact that all my units are still in the areas where i last left them now for this battle particularly it's just to showcase it to you because there won't be really much of a battle left but what does happen is now i can actually deploy units inside of these circles obviously the circles surrounding the objectives which does mean that pushing hard and not necessarily completing all the objectives first turn around you can very much use these circles as a very aggressive forward stepping stone where originally obviously you had to start relatively a little further away you can now aggressively set your defenses up now last but not least i just want to showcase some of these engineer support units we can't spawn all of them down because we only have 20 points but we can get mortars anti-tank atgms anti-air emplacements we can have a strong point recon as well as we can actually deploy some of these obstacles the same ones that you see over here so we can just kind of make like a little defensive line i'll throw some of the obstacles down we'll throw a strong point there uh, we'll do a uh, anti-air emplacement and we'll throw an observation post and then we can even throw another strong point. Look, we can actually gonna go crazy here. Uh, we can do that and we can make one more thing. And then what we do is confirm and look at that. Now we just have a little defensive line with BTR 70s with recon and infantry, as well as Shilkas. Obviously here missing are the ATGMs. You don't get a lot of infantry. It's, you know, half a platoon, but the blocking force and the ability of this to hold a position relatively long is not to be underestimated. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed this more detailed look at regiments and why I think it is very different from Warno and Wargame and I hope to catch you in the next one.